What's going on YouTube? It is your boy Chris back again with another video for you guys today. It's been a while, I understand. I've done a lot of videos on just from my Twitch highlights pretty much, me putting together a lot of pack opening videos. Uh, starting on Tuesday, we're going to have uh, our first FIFA 21 type video. So the next 30 days is going to be preparation for FIFA 21 trading and market. Preparing you guys for obviously how to make coins at the beginning of the year, stuff like that. Um, this will be my last FIFA 20 video. Now you guys might see FIFA 18 right here. I want to do a club tour video at the end of the year. And I want to show you guys my club progression over the last three FIFAs. Uh, and kind of go into a little bit of detail what happened uh, with these three years. So uh, with FIFA 18, I had 1,151 losses, 541 uh, or 541 losses. 1,151 wins. I finished on 86,000 coins. I was in Division 1. Again, this was the last game where there was actual divisions. Now, there's obviously Division Rivals the last two years. Um, in terms of transfer profit, I know as a trader, this was in my first... This was my first... Uh, my last FIFA that actually... Like, I just decided to just spend money on the game. Um, and if you look right here, I mean, look how far down I am in terms of the transfer profit. I just did not really care about, uh, trading at all back in, uh, FIFA 18. So a lot of the things that I did were, you know, buying packs with coins, uh, doing player reviews. If you look at my channel, my highest videos, my highest viewed videos are player reviews, uh, from FIFA 18. And that is because I would buy players the first hour. And then I would sell them a couple hours later and I would literally either lose coins sometimes or make maybe some coins for uh, one or two players. But here's the squad that we ended up with in FIFA 18. Uh, like I said, I mean, the wins and losses really aren't that great. Um, Martial here, you know, this was a great card in 254 games, 201, 102. Uh, I, I packed this guy out of a two rare player pack. Again, back in FIFA 18, the two rare player packs were much, much more for, uh, much more giving. I remember packing this, uh, Isco during, I think it was Path to Glory. Put him in this squad. Um, Jordi Alba team of the season. Ramos. Somebody that I just love playing with every single FIFA. And you'll see a common theme. Um, well, you won't see it in my FIFA 19 team, but FIFA 17, I also had this card. FIFA 18, I had, um, this Valencia card gave me nightmares because he would never win a header. Uh, and then here's the bench. I mean, this is all untradeable. This Gretzka stands out as probably my best red. Um, you know, in terms of everything that I've gotten. I remember I remember getting, I think it was Elite 3 monthlies. This was the last season where you would actually get monthly rewards. Um, so that was the team that we had right there. I don't believe I have much else um, other than that in terms of specials. Um, this Jesse Lingard actually is tradable. I bought him for 115,000 coins. I could probably just like take the coins on that. 98 Cavani here, which was probably my highest rated pull of the year. Uh, company, I did his, uh, I think it's his end of an error card. Uh, I did actually pack Ramos red. Uh, so for me, it was almost kind of a flex whether I wanted to use Ramos blue or his red card. Aguero player of the month. Um, and then obviously I had Bakioko, Bekovic. And that's really it for my FIFA 18 team. Uh, my club was really dry uh, at the end of FIFA 18 because of the Festival of Football promo. Uh, and because just opening so many different packs, man. Going onto the World Cup mode and all the stuff like that. So, that was pretty much FIFA 18. Um, it was, you know, the year that I kind of started content on Twitch and on kind of being more consistent. So... Like I I love that in this game honestly wasn't as bad as people thought it was I uh, thought it was in my opinion uh, looking back on it this game was probably a lot better um, than we give it credit for again obviously had its issues you know there was a lot of like you know slow gameplay and whatever uh, but the the speed of gameplay was really good um, compared to the last two years of FIFA um, I thought you know EA was a little bit and this is why I wish I was really involved with the market. Uh, back in FIFA 18 because it just was so much easier to invest um, Something that EA has done over the last two years has really tried to uh, Put their foot down on their market influence uh, And they're trying to screw people over a lot uh, In terms of investing and they don't and they decided not to drop SPCs depending on investments 
and it just it just sucks FIFA 18 I remember you know there wasn't really a big onus on trading and investing obviously there's people in this community that got really really uh they blew up because of FIFA 18 and stuff like that um and trading and that's how it's become more of a norm but in general FIFA 18 I don't know what this guy's doing trying to price fix Saul on FIFA 18 I don't know what the hell he's doing but uh in general I mean this game was probably better than we gave it credit for remember the end of the year it was so much better uh than the first six seven months again this was the year guys that Fortnite uh really took off and that is why you saw a lot of people probably leave the game including myself it took a lot of one month breaks over this game I did not touch this game for months on end um but looking back on it, i probably should have stayed on it um because i mean seeing the next two the next two years just wasn't as good so let's go over the fifa 19 and uh i'll cut it so we can go and show you guys the fifa 19 squad and then we will go on to the fifa 20 squad so on to fifa 19 this was the first fifa where i've i decided to go full rtg did not spend a single dime on this game the first four or five months, it really was a struggle for me to learn the market, learn how to trade uh, without the help of like low budget sniping. But uh, after January, I really, really learned the market. And I really understood the trends um, after that. And, you know, from then on, it's really just been very easy for me to make coins um, going into the team. Actually, let me let me show you guys the transfer profit again. Nothing too spectacular. I think the majority of this transfer profit, though, came after um after team of the year which i was at probably like five mil during team of the year and then i traded my butt off until like probably may and that's probably when i stopped i would say early may like prem team of the season uh was when i really stopped trading in fifa 19 almost 33 million trans profit i was about four to five mil before team of the year um and that made sense because i had about 1.7 to 1.8 during team of the year and I didn't, I didn't do much icon trading. I didn't do much informant special card trading. So my profits were pretty much along with my transfer profit. Obviously, you're going to see that taxed off. But here is the team that I had. FIFA 19 was a year where the arcade type mode really came into a part here. Um, I will say that this is probably the best team that I've assembled. Only due to the icon SBCs. Um, Icon SBCs need to be a, uh, a significant part of FIFA 21 if they want the game to be successful. Um, even if you were to price the SBCs really, really high, these guys need to be accessible at some point. Even if it's just the prime, it's not the moment. Lusabio's SBC cost me about 1.5 million to do. Uh, what a card he was for me. Vieira, I had my struggles with him, but he cost me about 1.2 million. Um, Hullet cost me about 2 uh, and for Rude Hullet Prime, I mean, I didn't get to use him a lot, but 220 games, he was phenomenal. Um, I remember doing this Pugba SPC. This was at a value, I believe at 700k, but I was able to kind of craft a little bit lower than that. Team of the Season Ronaldo, probably the best card that I've used over the last couple of years, only because I packed him untradeable out of the Ultimate Team of the Season Guarantee Pack. Red Lala, uh, which was obviously a great card last year. Uh, Desai was a mainstay of my team. 700 games played. Um, Dava Luiz, another card that I thought was pretty good. Um, I used a couple different cards. I used Blanc's moments as well. Um, I remember doing his SPC, and I had a little bit of a duo between Desai and Blanc. We had Ferlamendi here, obviously a great player last year. Got his move to Real Madrid in this past FIFA. Dava De Gea was the meta card, um, or one of the meta keepers. In FIFA, in FIFA 19, the bench, this was my main super sub. Uh, it was my Dembele, 119 games. He actually single-handedly got me, got me elite one weekend. Uh, didn't play much with this Richarlison, although he did score 40 goals and 20 assists in 46 games. Mo Salah didn't play a lot with him, but I packed him red. Promise, that was a card that just for, um, you know, nostalgic value, uh, you had to go and do him. 98 Suarez, I also pulled on tradable. So, what was kind of cool about last year as well is I did Hazard's um, uh, Fuddy's card, but I also did his. I also got his 98 card, untradeable red. If not the the craziest night of FIFA for me, where I packed 98 Hazard and 95 Sun, 
who last year both of them were ridiculously good. Um, Hazard for me, 348 games played, 217 goals, 182 assists. What a card for me. I loved using this Hayden Hazard. Um, his his close control dribbling was amazing. Uh, and his finesse shots. Obviously, last year's meta was the first time finesse. Um, so, that was just amazing. Not even Ronaldo. Just, I love this club. This club in particular was really, really good. Um, I just wish the gameplay was a little bit better, obviously. Didn't really have anything else in that club either. But let's go over to FIFA 20 and show you guys the progression we've made in terms of transfer profit and maybe some cards in the team as well. On to FIFA 20. Um, obviously, this year's game has had its faults. Um, in terms of transfer profit progression, uh, we do have 55 million. Now, anybody that knows my streams, anyone that's that knows me in general... We really stopped trading around FUB birthday, the second week of FUB birthday this year. Uh, and the reason for that was because I lost my motivation a little bit. Um, I was a little drained out uh, trying to balance school, trading, content as well. So we really stopped probably around the 50 mil mark. And then obviously whatever we... The last like, you know, seven to nine weekends that I played weekend league, I just relied on rewards to fund my account. I didn't really trade at all. Um but that motivation is going to come back at the start of this year fifa 21 but i'm also going to continue that motivation going into next summer uh i'm not going to stop and i don't think in terms of a transfer profit goal i mean it's not hard i don't think to get 150 million um we're at 55 here we really stopped around the 50 mark um and honestly i think i can hit 150 million i, I don't think it's it's under the realm of Po it's it's definitely it's definitely possible so we're gonna try for that 150 million which will get you um top 100 actually if you look at transfer profit um uh, all time 119 million so 150 mil would get you um i mean it looks like it gets you into the top 50 yeah for me uh, and i've talked about this with a few other people as well Transfer profit, if you know what you're doing, is all based on your motivation and how much time you have. Going full-time on Twitch and on YouTube will allow me to look at the market a lot more and not have to focus on other things. I'm literally just focusing on FIFA content, which is going to be a plus for me in terms of trying to make coins at the beginning of next year's game. Uh, try not to drag this game, uh, this video out a lot. This is going to be on my last FIFA 20 video, so... FIFA 21 content obviously starts on Tuesday. Here is how the team lines up. Now, you can pretty much, instead of take out the icons that I had in last year's game, take in the team of the year cards. Something, a huge thing that happened this year is we packed six team of the years. Um, we spent about 7 million coins during upgrades in January. We were able to pack ourselves the Bruyne on tradable. And something that I encourage a lot of people to do is to try and get your accounts to be fully untradable. Uh, and the reason for that is because you never have to worry about what your team's price is. A lot of people always come into Twitch chat, so they always go into YouTube comment sections, always asking, how do I, like, when do I sell my team? When do I buy my team? If you make it to enough coins and you can get an untradable type team, that is much more fulfilling in my opinion. And for me, this year was probably my best year in terms of just like having overall fun with the menu content. FIFA 18 summer was great, but for me, FIFA 20 all around has been really, really good. Um, the viewership obviously has been climbing upwards. I expect that to continue in FIFA 21. This was the squad that we ended up on. Uh, and there's many different things I could do with this squad as well. I mean, I can easily put in Sun here for Mane. I can easily put in uh, Pulisic for Mane. I can put in Lacazette, who, by the way, is probably one of my favorite players to use this year. 310 games played. 268 208 it was just incredible how good he was uh for me this year this Dion car was great as well uh didn't really use the dembele much ramos again for me my best center back um like every year every year he continues to be a great center back for me never have any problems with him van dyke was a little bit of a fraud not gonna lie uh and same with mane i didn't really see the full potential on those two cards same maximum was great although he hit the post a lot uh conte was a goat De Bruyne was great. Robertson remains to be probably my best left back this year. 646 games, 657, and then 682. You're just seeing how much of a mainstay those guys were. 
uh, in my team since January. And that's when I really started to play Ultimate Team. And another accomplishment that I got this year, and I'm trying, I'm dragging this video out a lot, but another accomplishment of this year's game was I was able to hit Elite 1 six out of seven weeks. That's something that I wasn't able to do back in FIFA 17. I only hit it one time. Um, I never hit in FIFA 18. I didn't hit in FIFA 19. Look at my record this year compared to my previous years. Instead of 1,100 wins uh, and about 550 losses on both accounts, I'm at 1,300 wins and 360 losses. If you look at just my overall draft record, uh, I don't like to hide myself up a lot, but 407 games, 407 wins and 62 losses, 76 wins and 76 four wins in a row out of 139. That's more than half of the drafts that I uh, play in. I'm winning them. Um, so I definitely think, I mean, this game definitely got worse for me, but I got better. Uh, and I really understood the meta of this year's game. So hopefully, you know, with the FIFA 21, the goal is 150 million. The goal is to grind the my ass off. Um, it's to have fun and we're just gonna have some good vibes in FIFA 21. We're gonna have a lot of content for you guys over the next 30 days uh, with FIFA 21 coming. Uh, I'm gonna prepare you guys a lot uh, for the start of the year. Uh, and then as we go into the year, expect two uploads a day uh, when the full game comes out. That is when our, our real grind is gonna be. Six hour streams a day, two uploads a day. Get ready, cause FIFA 21 is almost coming. We got about three and a half weeks. Uh, or pretty much a full month ready to go for 21. So thank you guys for watching this video. Um, I like doing these type of videos, these end game teams and stuff like that. Appreciate you all. Uh, great year with FIFA 20 as well. Really established myself a little bit in the community. And we're going to continue to do that for FIFA 21. So thank you guys. I appreciate it. And I will, tell, I will talk to you guys in the video soon. Peace out.